Welcome everyone to the Foundations TV. Our guests tonight are the founding members of the organization Meru Education Foundation. We have Anita Shastri and Shekhar Shastri. Welcome to the Foundations TV. Thank you. And we also have Pallavi Nagesh here with us, who is the artistic director of the same organization. So we're very, very happy here to have you. And we are very interested actually to know a little bit about your organization when it was founded, why it was founded, and uh, the name. I'm very intrigued by the name. So elaborate a little bit upon that, please. Sure. Thank you, Gauri. It's wonderful to be here. So we started the Meru Education Foundation in 2002. The mission is simply to promote arts, culture, and languages of India for audiences in Northern America. The word Meru and the name that we chose was short and small for the American audience again. Uh, but it's very symbolic of the Eastern philosophies. It signifies the Mount Meru, oh. and it goes all the way from Sumeru in Persia to the Buddhist philosophy and the Jambudweep, which signifies the Indian subcontinent. It is really the center of the universe, it is believed in there. And in the body, Meru is signified as the spinal cord. So it is the center of your own being, and so when we started the organization, the philosophy was to understand the grammar behind our uh, arts, performing arts, and the aesthetics. Uh, what is the underlying uh, code or analytical basis of this? And why does our music, when we listen to our rag, why does it connote a sunri sunrise or a sunset? So that grammar is something that is our mission to explore and explain to our students who are learning about our arts here in North America. And so that's how we chose Meru. It's short and it also has a very deep meaning. Uh, so if you want to really delve deeper, you can go there as well. I, I totally love the way you explained everything. It's it's very nice, very deep, and very interesting. Uh, you know, there is, there is a, a reason behind every single thing that you have chosen to do. Um, to start and uh, up till now. And that actually leads us to the next question. What all have you chosen to do since you started? Is it, uh, you know, just elaborate, maybe Shekharji can elaborate a little bit on the events and the programs that you uh, have conducted in the past. Sure. Meru conducts educational programs, as Vanita mentioned. For a large range of audiences, we conduct programs in schools. In Massachusetts, in New Hampshire, we have conducted teacher training on how to teach topics related to India, the arts, culture, and languages, as Vanita mentioned. In addition, we have prepared modules that have been uh, uh, taught, that are, are being taught in university and colleges as well. And for popular audiences, we take the core of Indian culture in a form that is very engaging and entertaining. Excellent. So there's two different things I'm hearing. Uh, one is the education part with through the schools and the teachers. And if anybody is interested in knowing more about that, they can get in touch with you or go on your website and find out more about how to reach out to you. Um, and also there's some entertainment aspect. So I believe there has been an event which I remember Ragrang attending. I remember attending that one. It was, uh, I think it was one of the most um, intellectually, even though there's, there was music and entertainment associated with it, but the whole theme was very intellectually driven too. There was the rag and there was the knowledge that was coming, uh, you know, flowing through the music uh, to the audiences. So uh, I think that was, that was a beautiful, beautiful event. Certainly. Thank you. Um, going straight into the next event that's coming up, which is actually the focus of our discussion today. We do have an event coming up, which is actually a dance event this time. And um, maybe Vinita ji, you can talk about who is the dancer going to be and what is this, what's special 
about this particular dance? Sure. So we are uh, we have brought artists and scholars in the past. Uh, we've done Summit Meru, which is one of our programs, the theme, the branding of a uh, program. And under the Summit Meru, we would bring a scholar who talk in depth about a particular topic. In the same format, we also bring artists who perform and then maybe talk about the dance. So I'm really excited that uh, in about three and a half weeks on September 14th, we will be presenting Vistar, which is a classical performance of Odissi dance. Wow. And performing uh, this dance will be Madhvi Mudgal and her troupe from India, the Gandharva troupe. They are based in New Delhi and uh, also happens to be my dance teacher. So I remember uh, watching Madhvi way back uh, in Delhi and uh, I just decided that she was going to be my guru. And I went up to her and I said, you have to teach me. And she was not a teacher at that time. She was just a performing dancer. So I'm really her first student oh, wow. and she's been my mentor and my friend and I really um, you know I'm so excited that I have the honor of hosting her and presenting her to me you know Madhvi symbolizes um, really the combination of modern sensibilities with the classical ethos of the Indian performing arts often we hear that this is a traditional art form is this a classical dance and I think Madhvi uh, is philosophy is that if I'm doing it now and I'm a modern person, this dance is modern, uh, or at least I'm able to bring my abilities uh, from the current to decorate this very interesting performing art. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, uh, and Odissi, as some of you may know, is a very, very graceful lyrical dance style from the eastern part of India of the state of Urissa, and you will see uh, it very circular, and uh, the way it was reconstructed also, it takes a lot from temple architecture. So as you watch this dance, you can see, uh, you know, some of the murtis that you may have in your home, uh, they become alive. Very nice. Now, I, you have described the dance form so beautifully and also your relationship with your teacher. I am a little curious, though, so I'm going to have a little question here. Uh, you said that she, uh, you saw her performing and you went up to her, reached out and said you wanted to be her student and you were her first student. So was, that, was she your first teacher as well? Is that when you started learning? No, I was learning off and on with other people, okay. Okay. but uh, you know I was mostly doing at that time like dances from the films. Okay. And okay. Uh, my one stint of learning classical dance, you know, didn't go very far because the teacher wasn't very excited. Okay. Okay. Oh well, yeah, it does depend on the teacher. Totally understand that. So, do you still dance? Do you still perform? I don't perform as much, but I am a really a scholar of dance. I keep up the practice, but I talk a lot about it. I give lecture demonstrations. So you must be so excited to have her here uh, and come and perform here for your event. I'm really looking forward to that. She's on a U.S. tour, That's and uh, it's really nice that she'll be able to include Boston in her travels. Beautiful. Now, I have nothing to do with Odissi dance at all. I have no association with this Odissi dance, but I have friends who have watched her in India. And once they knew that I'm going to be talking about this event, they came back and told me that they are excited to, <laughs> to see her here. So that itself speaks volumes about her um, capabilities. So that's, that's really good. So September 14th is Vistar, and this is in Lexington. So I'm also extremely excited to come watch the dance with all of you. And uh, if, if, uh, did you have anything else you wanted to add, or can I just? Uh, I, I also wanted to just add quickly that, you know, for this particular one, we are partnering with the America India Foundation, oh, okay. and okay. we are doing this as a fundraiser for the flood victims in northern India mm -hmm. uh, that were affected by the tsunami in the Himalayan tsunami okay. recently. Okay. Well, there is a there is a cause as well. Cause yes. as well. So um, everything it's entertainment plus plus a genuine cause. So that's really good. So um, that's of course one side of the story. Now I want to hear the other side of the story as an audience, uh, as a member of the audience. Is if I come in, what can I expect, Pallavi, from a show like this? So everybody from every walk of life will get something or the other from this show, and I can guarantee that. Um, today seems to be a day for coining words. Um, I'm going to coin another word, maybe it's already coined, but edutainment. Meru um, is probably the premier institute that, that provides true edutainment. Um, it's entertainment with um, a nuance of education in it. And um, like uh, Vandita said, we have Summit Meru, which has brought many, very many programs that both entertain as well as educate. And you brought up Ragrang uh, as the producer, one of the producers of Ragrang. I can say that um, 
although a lot goes into producing it, a lot comes out. We, we are so fortunate to have such an educational, entertaining uh, diaspora here in Boston. And um, I think Shekhar said, um, touched a little bit upon the education and he uh, glanced over the entertainment, but entertainment is a big part of, of Meru and we hope to catch all the audiences out there. Um, plus this is a noble cause. People will come because um, they are going to be supporting this floods in Uttaranchal, which is a very nice cause. And there's the ideology of, of Vistar, of the space. And as um, Vanita touched upon it, and I hope Shekhar will elaborate a little bit more about how um, Madhavi uses spaces. And that intellectual aspect will appeal to a lot of people. For dancers, whether you're a novice or you are an established dancer, there is always something to learn from Madhavi's choreography and her expression of a story and of, and of the music. Um, and again, I'm sure Shekhar will elaborate a little bit more about that. So if you want to learn more, you can always go on to our website, which is imeru.net, and you can get more information both about Meru and about the event. And you can buy tickets to the event, which is on September 14th at the Lexington Heritage Museum. And you can buy the tickets on Suleika or on Lokwani, and you can also get more information on our website, which is imeru.net. Excellent. Thank you so much. That was very useful, I'm sure, for everybody who's listening. And as she said, Shekharji, would you like to elaborate on the dance style a little bit? Uh, certainly. Madhavi is the premier disciple of Guru Keluchiran Mahapatra, uh, who uh, hailed from uh, the eastern state of Orissa. And Guru Keluchiran is considered the architect of the modern form of Odissi dance style. And uh, Madhavi is the forebearer of that tradition. So when I say the tradition, as Vanita briefly touched upon also, the challenge for an artist is to take the tradition into the future. And that's where she has excelled and the reason being that she comes from a family of classical musicians. She's an architect. She is a premier dancer. So she is able to bring together the physical spaces, the internal spaces, and also the rhythmic and the melodic structures and create sculptures there, dynamic sculptures. So. This particular choreography, Vistar, that she is talking about, it starts, fr starts from a core and then it elaborates in many different dimensions. And when it elaborates, the task is complex, but the result is perceptible. The audiences are touched. And that's when it becomes beauty in pure form. And that's where Madhavi is. And Madhavi, for that matter, uh, Alistair McCauley, who is uh, uh, the dance critic for uh, the New York Times, said that Madhavi Mudgal is a legend. And she said he has stated that today on the planet, if there are three dancers that he is absolutely in love with, are Mikhail Barishnikov, Sarah Redner, and Madhavi Mudgal. Excellent. And to add to that, I think there was a list that was shared to uh, shared with me mm -hmm. before we started recording of the awards that she has received. To you know, all the substance that uh, we've shared today through this interview is also attested by the number of awards she has credited to her name, including uh, the Padma Shri and uh, the Sangeet Natak Academy Award and the Chevalier de Lord awarded by the government of France. So uh, that's that's very very commendable. And uh, you know, it's very nice to see that Mary education. Meru Education Foundation is is bringing uh, such an accomplished artist here for the Boston audiences. So this is really, really nice. So did you want to add anything, Vanita, before we end? I just wanted to uh, thank you, Gauri, for hosting us and doing this. Uh, I also wanted to, to uh, Shekhar's point that uh, she has now actually trained a whole 
set of dances. So really taking the classical form into the future because there are many dancers you will see in the troupe. So it's not just a solo performance, it will be actually a group oh, performance. Good, good. So, and when you see classical dance in a group setting, that dynamic impact and that ex aesthetic experience, I think uh, will be something which is breathtaking. And I invite you all uh, to come and uh, be part of this event on September 14th at the National Heritage Museum. I would like to also add that uh, um, I knew Madhavi uh, for some time because uh, her father was my music teacher. Oh, wow. I learned uh, music for, from him. Nice. And I used to see these Odyssey uh, performances. And uh, uh, I must admit, I was uh, young at that time, and I fell in love with all of Madhavi's students. <laughs> and I happened to, uh, uh, I ended up marrying one of oh those. My So there are many yeah. such stories that that you can find in in the in the dance in not just Madhavi's dance but in any dance, but in particular Madhavi's dance, as Vanita said, is very rich in storytelling, and um, it, it's something that you must all come and experience for yourself. And um, I'm going to throw in one little challenge. Both of both uh, Vanita and Shekhar touched upon the fact that um, the choreography emulates temple architecture. So for the people in the audience, I'm going to quiz you after the show of how many pieces of temple architecture you saw, you saw or you found during the dance. So not only are we excited to see the beautiful dance performance, we also have something really, really uh, fun to look forward to as well. So thank you so much, all three of you, for joining us tonight. I, for one, am going to be there for the show. And I invite all my friends and all the viewers uh, who will be watching this video. I think this is, a, a, this is a lot of good information that was shared tonight. So please do come and watch the show September 14th in the Lexington Heritage Museum. We will look forward to seeing all of you. Thanks so much.